Hey guys, welcome back to the Lawrence McKenna channel. Liverpool have just beaten Sparta Prague 5-1 away from home in Prague. This whole video is going to be framed by the phrase, job done, job not done. Because, well, they are halfway through that, but the rest of the season, the whole season, is job done, job not done. Confidence has been reinstilled around Liverpool in this Liverpool side. Confidence has been reinstilled in individuals within this team. Klopp has reinstilled confidence in himself after people doubted him last season. But the job is not done. And Liverpool are only halfway through this tie where whilst they might be 5-1 up, there is still, you know, I mean, the likelihood of a team scoring four is extremely low. There are very few teams that have done it in any competition but there is still a threat from Prague. And the reason there is still a threat from Prague is because of the amount of chances that Liverpool conceded against Sparta and the nature of those chances and the fact that they could have put more away. And the fact that when we did the preview months, uh, weeks ago now, we highlighted all of the threats that Prague have. They are an offensive side who will try to smother you at times, who will overwhelm you, who will find ways of playing through the way that you play because of the shapes that they play in, because of the personnel that they have and they, the places they put them in in terms of the inside left, inside right and how they attack that Liverpool back line. We said it from day one. I couldn't do a preview earlier in the week because I was sick and then today I was looking after my kids. So I'm sorry that this one's a late one, but they realistically earlier on in the game, I was looking at my notes and I was like, this is one of the more conservative games that I've seen Liverpool play. They were effectively playing as a counter-attacking team quite early on. And it's, if you play as a counter-attacking team, of course the opposition are going to come forward and it's going to make it difficult. But it put a lot of pressure on that Liverpool back line. It put a lot of pressure on Kelleher and on Kwanzaa and on, particularly on uh, Kanate. And I was kind of surprised as the way that Liverpool were approaching it, but also not. We've seen a very inconsistent starting eleven in recent weeks all along the back line, all through the midfield and all through the front line as well. There is not one part of this team that has been particularly consistent, should we say. And whilst Andy Robertson has started a lot more at left back, you know, Virgil van Dijk has started and obviously Kevin Keller has been, you know, a revelation of sorts in that back line. I still think a lack of consistency is down to injuries, Klopp needing to rotate and get through this portion of the season and see where we're at after that. But also just the fact that Liverpool are trying to Liverpool are trying to instill a sense of confidence throughout this team and we have to use the very breadth of the whole squad, not just the starting eleven. What I do love about that is that in previous years, I probably would have started reviews and gone, you know what, I'll talk about Salah, I'll talk about Mane, I'll talk about the leadership here, I'll talk about this. Now when I look at previews and reviews, I'm looking at an adaptability of not only the style of this team, where the emphasis is, all that kind of stuff, but also hey, it could be a Curtis Jones kind of day if Curtis Jones plays, or it could be, obviously he didn't, but you get what I'm saying. It could be a Vic Virgil van Dijk kind of day. It could be a Robertson day, a Gomez emphasis day. And there's plenty of different places to put that emphasis. I'd love to start in the back line yet again. 5-1, the only goal which actually got conceded was an own goal from Connor Bradley, which was his first touch in the second half. Not particularly indicative of the way that he played. Really unfortunate own goal. Actually, amazing finish. Put it past Keller. Keller was never going to reach it. It is what it is. But we actually shouldn't have been in that position. And if he hadn't have cut it out, it would have gone to one of their players. He just could have cut it out slightly more efficiently, but not all that differently. The point being, right, they put us in a lot of difficult positions. And Kelleher, again, got us out of a lot of tricky positions. Tafarel, is the way I think his, line is, his name is said, is one of the greatest Brazilian goalkeepers. I'm not saying that from direct experience. I read about him when he first came in, became goalkeeper coach, and I remember thinking, I wonder what impact this will have on Alisson, the Brazilian on Brazilian impact. And obviously it has been very positive. We've seen, <coughs> that's that illness. We've seen particularly, uh, obviously, uh, him improve or remain more consistent and also to be able to reach a lot more chances, spread his body in different ways, use his body weight, use the way that he goes down for the ball or comes out to the ball in different ways, stays calm, is very consistent, doesn't seem all that flappable in the same way that maybe he was even just a season ago. Same for Kelleher. It's going to be sad to see all of Klopp's backroom staff leave because we are seeing some of the best coaching of this Liverpool team that we have seen in recent years, if not throughout his whole time at Liverpool. And believe me, there's been some incredible coaching in this time, not only on individual levels, but also on systems. And on top of that, just looking at the way that individuals within the Liverpool team have gelled, 
looking at Kelleher and the confidence that he has, the I am not beatable unless you're going to do something incredible demeanor that he has is really special. And it instills the back line with a sense of confidence. One which, it means that Klopp can rotate his centre-backs. He can rotate his left-back, right-back, even the DM. Although, I would currently start Wataru Endo. I think he might even be the first name on the team, team sheet, even ahead of Kelleher. And Kelleher is our only option, realistically. Anyway, point being, we concede a lot of chances. It's probably because it is a fairly underused pairing of Kanate and Kwanzaa. Maybe an uncomfortable side for Kanate, but... You know, he's the quality centre-back, but he is very comfortable on the other side, attacking the ball, got that foot there, and sort of works quite well, nicely. So I get it. Like, that's okay. <coughs> I'm really sorry about that. You then move into midfield. A couple of things I'm really enjoying. Watto Rendo has to start against City. I think he's one of our only options in trying to control, in the best way that we can in that game, this midfield. And this game was always going to be a game with the eye going towards Man City and what was going to happen this weekend. You can't talk about this Liverpool side without talking about the Man City game. It's been building up to that for weeks. We've been trying to bring players back from injury. We've been trying to instill the squad with a sense of confidence in order to get to this game, build a sense of momentum around the team. Hey, whoever's in there, you're going to be good. Whoever plays, the system is the thing that wins out. Your finishing is fantastic. Your finishing is fantastic. You know? So... There's all of that, and I think it's been really well instilled, probably as well instilled as it could be from Klopp. And in fact, I don't want to go into the City game all that confident, because even though we are still a very good team and we are top of the league, we should be going in confident. City are a fantastic side, and you will always be blindsided by a side like City if you go in overconfident in games like this. But point being, if you have someone like Endo in there, there is a cover all in the same way as there is with Kelly, in the same way as there is with Kanate, who, by the way, came out tonight with a, a, on the edge of an injury, apparently not having been injured. So that's good news, essentially. Joe Gomez also taken out. Andy Robertson, he's come back from an injury. Did I expect him to see a player full 90? Does this mean Joe Gomez might start on the weekend? A few questions around that. See that in the preview tomorrow on the channel. Anyway, point being, right? Endo's in there. He has opened up the world for the other players that play alongside him. He allows them to let loose and just rush forward, right? McAllister is unlocked. Brighton, thank you so much for the price that you let us pay for him because I'm so grateful for the fact that we have him in the midfield now. Not only does he unlock the front line and allow players like Nunez and Gakpo and Diaz space and runs that maybe they wouldn't have had before or they would have had but were maybe not appreciated, it also allows a very quick winning of the ball back. There are times where I don't, his pass is a little off or there is times where Watu Endo's Passing is a little off. He's just trying to get rid of the ball or get it to someone as fast as he can. That's okay. That's what Klopp is asking for. That's within the system. But when I then look at the fact that tonight Liverpool were able to start Harvey Elliott as well in that position and bring him on that right side, enabling Cody Hakpo, who's then inside. There's like a, a new kind of triangle being formed out on that side on the right between whoever it is that plays right back, that's Nigel Gomez initially or Connor Bradley. There's a lot of overlapping, there's a lot of underlapping, there's a lot of winning the ball back in that right-handed side because we are just so strong over there. We harry, we press, we rush the opposition in that area. If we don't win it back in possession, we win it back on the second ball at the other end or they cede possession to us and we just have to get it back. That's not going to be so easy against City. And I think, you know, obviously Prague, I think, are a real quality side, especially for this level of football. Liverpool have done really well to beat them 5-1, especially with the fact that this team haven't been playing together with the synergy that you see a starting eleven play with for weeks now. We've had cup finals, we've had all sorts of different disruptive factors, including injuries. And this team, <coughs> this team gelled this evening. Now, they were a lot more conservative, but they enabled other things. Let's then go to that front line. Nunez, Diaz, Gakpo. Let's first start with Nunez. Two immense finishes this evening. The first of which, some people say the goalkeeper should save. I think it's kind of a Nunez, that's like his sig a signature for him at this point. He's done that a few times. I can't remember, was it in the FA Cup, the League Cup, you guys might remember. He just stepped out and it, the shot goes over the keeper. Do you know why? Because it takes like a late loop. Ronaldo had his like knuckleball. Nunez has this looping, arcing, dipping shot that just goes under the crossbar and people go, well, the goalkeeper should have had that. No, the ball's like two feet over his hand by the time that he can get it up. And the speed of it and the shocking nature of where it is always eludes the goalkeeper in some way. Sometimes it goes over the bar, sometimes it goes in. But the point being, it's a great finish. His other finish is also fantastic. 
And the, what separates us? Seeing McAllister score a goal. Fantastic. All of these would say, Liverpool's unpredictability, where the goals are going to come from. McAllister's adding from midfield. We always wanted Hendo to score more goals. We always wanted Wijnaldum to score more goals. They came through in big occasions. Wijnaldum and Hendo both coming through clutch from those midfield positions. But consistently now, <coughs> we're seeing someone like McAllister genuinely become a goal threat and not just like an outside goal threat, but someone that people go, shoot when you get the ball or the opposition worry is going to shoot from the edge of the box. He's not the only player in the team to do that. See Dominic Soboslai. But... Having that threat draws players out, gives Nunes more space, and it also means that when you see Nunes in that position, he's got a pass off, players can't rush to him, it opens up the game for him. I am also very appreciative of what Cody Gakpo does right now. I think he's massively underappreciated in this team. I think there's a lot of people who get on his back, and I think he's completely unneeded. He's a great player. What touches he do does have in the game when he is driving forward, I think they're great. Very often it opens up a lot of passing lanes because the opposition back off him very quick. He's very big. His strides carry him very far. Ball goes very quickly with him. He's great at retaining possession or getting a free kick. And he's also really good at finding someone else in the team or making them dangerous enough that you have to foul him, take him out of the game. On the other side, Luis Diaz, someone who's massively and chronically underappreciated by the Liverpool side, mainly because he carries the ball a lot, can lose it, and sometimes his pass are a little bit misplaced and his cut inside doesn't always come to fruition. But... Clearly Klopp is after him to cut inside, make those passes and drive with the ball like that. Because guess what? It's not just about what the individual player does, it's about how it moves the opposition around. Andy Robertson's got movement out there. Lots of different people have got lots of different movements that this Liverpool team unlocked the opposition with. Some of it is a decoy. Some of it is, you know what? If you run that way, he's going to run that way and it's going to open up for him. Even if he wins the second ball or the ball ricochets off to someone else. Well done. Keep doing what you are doing. And I can't appreciate that enough. Because it's so easy, and it happens a lot within this Liverpool team, for players to self-sacrifice and not be appreciated, or for players with big egos to not do the self-sacrificing and therefore it not be appreciated. But people who don't watch Liverpool regularly, and I see this a lot in other people's reviews, I'm getting bored of non-Liverpool fans reviewing Liverpool games, because guess what? They don't care about the team, they just say players are good, they talked about Liverpool's form, saying things like Liverpool are the form side in the league right now, not in terms of just wins, but in terms of the way they play. Are you joking? Sorry, I get annoyed about this sort of stuff, because frankly, it's weird to watch people who don't care about this club speak about the club. They're doing it for views. They're doing it cynically. Can't be bothered with it. Le miss me with all that. But they speak about our front line fairly regularly in terms that I don't get. I watch it and I'm like, just truisms, just rubbish. And I get annoyed by it because I'm like, what? You're just doing it because you're exploiting people who love the club. You're just saying things that you know please the audience. Doing it for cash. That's dumb. I just, it's not adding anything to our space. It's making our space look stupid. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point being, right, that front line has a lot of people who do things and self-sacrifice. And it's very rarely mentioned. This team sacrifices a lot. It's why we won the Carabao Cup final. It's why we got through those games that were really difficult. It's why we get through games like Forest, where in the past, I think the team would get in their own heads. The team would worry, oh, it's one of those days. We're not going to get it through. You know, let's move on to the next one, whatever. This mentality, the way that Virgil van Dijk has instilled this team in the sense of leadership, but also with just with the sense of things never ending, has changed Liverpool fundamentally, I think, as a side. We have a different level of a belief. We have a different place that we go to when things are difficult now. And as amazing as previous eras are, are it's great to see that what we have right now is a tool that really works. I'm going to be at the Man City game on the weekend. This is a great game to lead into it. I don't want to put too much weight on winning 5-1 against Sparta Prague. I think Liverpool went out there to smother them, kill them, put this tie as far ahead of them as possible. It's not to bed, but as far ahead of them as possible. And to do something which, frankly, was going to make it really difficult in the second leg when you then came back to Anfield. Because surprise, surprise, we've got a lot of fixture pit pile up. If we can go back to Anfield, lock that game down. Job done, job not done. Do you get what I'm saying? Point being, we're looking towards the City game. This is Massive game for Liverpool. Draw, and Arsenal can go top. Lose, you know where we're going. <coughs> I'm going to the game. If you see me there, come say hi. I'd love to say hi. But also, it's a big one for us, right? Like, it is like, this is monumentally big. Liverpool can put down a statement with just a performance. It's not about the win, although it is about the win, but it's not about the win. It is about the performance we put in against City. 
We had been tested against Chelsea, a team that frankly we shouldn't have been tested against. Great win, great, great uh, confidence builder, but that team is just super low right now. Let's contextualize all these big wins. Same against Prague, really good team, but you know, we're talking about a team here that the yardstick is City. It's not Chelsea or Prague or any of these sides. What we're really going to see is the very heights of what we're capable of. And I really hope this Liverpool team can turn up. They did not turn up against that Arsenal side and we got taken apart. To an extent, they did turn up, but the, the tactics didn't and the execution didn't. We need the, both those things on Sunday. Big preview tomorrow. Really looking forward to it. Let me know who you thought was the best player in the game. Just going to make sure that I did... Um, Go through everyone. Again, really appreciate Gerard Kwanzaa. Like Sandy Robertson captaining it tonight. Was it really worth a mention? Probably not. And then uh, I did also enjoy the subs. Sub size goal, absolutely loved. Uh, Connor Bradley, same about the own goal, but still good. Bobby Clark, again, came on. He's becoming a pretty regular fixture in this. And Mo Salah, great to see him coming back on the field. Really loved his drive. Actually really appreciated his goal, which wasn't a goal in the end. But great to see him back in. Good to see Klopp bedding people back in. I expect our centre-back pairing on Sunday to be Virgil van Dijk and Konate. Kevin Kelleher behind that, Joe Gomez, Andy Robertson, Wacheruendo, McAllister, possibly Sobersly, though possibly Harvey Elliott, Nunes, Gakpo, ooh, actually, Nunes, Salah, Diaz. Gakpo, Salah, Diaz. Thank you. Let me know what you start predicting starting limits are, who you thought was best in this game. Hit the Discord if you haven't, hit the Patreon if you want to support the channel. Makes it really easy for me because obviously I can then know the money I'm relying on month to month and when I get sick, it's tricky. Uh, lots more stuff coming up on there. There is a director's commentary over on the uh, Patreon, a 50 minute video where I talk about Jurgen Klopp. Big one, uh, goes really in depth, talks about Klopp when he first started to Klopp now. If you're interested in watching it, it is the price of a coffee or, you know, it, fairly expensive coffee with a coffee in London or anywhere in England now and I really appreciate it it helps us do the work that we're trying to do plenty more docs to come plenty more analysis to come join us over there on the Patreon on the Discord on this channel hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video probably the preview tomorrow much love bye